Hello there and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video we're going to cover how to read data from a Postgres database and insert it into a SQL Server database using custom components. These are components you'll be able to use after downloading and installing the ZappySys SSIS Power Pack and you can do that by going directly to the zappysys.com website shown here and then going to products SSIS Power Pack and download the free trial and I'll be sure to add a link for this in the description of the video below. Alright, let's get to it. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio and you can either open an existing product, project if you have one or you can create a new project. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to use the integration services template and I'm just going to call it Sappy Sys Demo. So immediately when the project gets created, you should notice about 70 plus custom components in the toolbox on the left hand side. All of these have the ZS prefix and you'll see some if you're on the control flow pane and you'll see additional components if you're on the data flow pane. So these are all of the components that you would get once you install this power pack. So again, this video is to get data from a Postgres database. So I'm going to drag a data flow task and then I'm going to go into the task and I'm going to add the custom Zappy Sys Postgres source option. So if you already have an existing Postgres database, you can select that in the configuration. I don't have any connection strings in this list, so I'm going to add a new database. So I'm going to add my server, my user, and my password. I'm going to keep the rest of the defaults. They work for me, including the database name. You'll definitely want to be sure to use the proper database name. And just pay attention to this SSL option. If you're using a local database on some local server, you may not want to have that enabled. But if you're going to somewhere over the web, you probably want to use that feature. Test the connection. It works. Great. So now we have our database connection and we can either get data from an entire table or we can write a query. So if we select the table option, these will be all of the tables that are available in that database that we selected. I think there's one in here called Zappy Sys, so I'm going to use that one. If we preview it, we'll see, okay, there's four basic rows for order IDs for three customers on various dates. Okay, great. But we can also use this custom query so we don't have to get an entire table. So a basic example would be, let's suppose we only want to get the rows where the customer is AA. Now we only get the two rows for that customer. But this is just a super basic example of a custom SQL. You could do joins, you could limit the number of columns you return. You could do many different things. And here's even, if you click on view examples, here's some other help documents about some basic examples if you're not too confident or curious about the SQL that you would use. Uh, you could also use variables. So let's use an example of a variable. Um, let's create one called test string. So we'll give it a data type of string and we'll stick with our same example. Actually, let's use a different example. Let's use customer BB. So if we go back into our SQL, we can change this to use the variable that we just created. And this should only give us one row just for that customer. And again, that's a very basic example of a variable Really common examples use date time functions. So if you want to get data relative to a date, let's say within the last seven days, no matter what day your code runs or from a specific year, you can use very powerful date expressions to use dates that are relative to certain things. So that's just an example of what a variable can do. So we'll stick with that. It says, hey, do you want to change the metadata? Sure, because I changed it from code to a variable. And now we need to give the destination. So I'm going to use this custom upsert destination 
from Zappy Sys. And this one is really cool because it doesn't just insert data into a database. It also can update and delete data at the same time. So I'm going to connect my task. And now I'm going to open this. And I have to give it another connection. Where do I want to put the data? Well, I don't want to put it back in the same Postgres database. So I'm going to connect to another server that I have. And I'm going to add a new connection. And this server is the SQL Server instance you see at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to pick the test database. So I'm going to test the connection. It works. Great. And if we go into this instance, test has three tables. Very basic. Just like in the Postgres feature, I can pick a specific table to put stuff into, but I don't want to mess with these existing tables. You can also create a new table, and I'm going to use that feature. When I click New, it gives me the code based on the data types and values it got from the previous step from the Postgres database, so that's great. I'm going to call this table the Postgres data table because I didn't like that default name that it gave me. And I'm going to click OK. It says, hey, it mapped the columns from the source to the destination. Everything is great. I'm going to say cool. And now if I go back into my database and I click refresh on this database, I should see my new table created Postgres data. Awesome. If I say select the first rows, though, there is no data in it. We haven't put anything in it. OK, no problem. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And you have to give a table a key. So we'll give it the order ID key. And we'll say, this looks great. I'm going to stick with this. It says, hey, we can add an index to speed things up. Do you want to do that? Sure. That sounds great. Let's try to make it fast. And now all we have to do is run the package that we just made. That's going to go get data from the Postgres source. It's going to insert it into our SQL Server instance using the variable that we made. And now, when I run the same code, I see my one row that was inserted. That's awesome. How easy is that? One more thing I'll point out about this upsert feature is sometimes you may not want to just continuously append data to this table. Maybe you want to drop the table or drop an index or do something before you load the data from the source. So you can use these advanced features. That would help in that instance. But that's really it. Super easy, uh, very intuitive, and that's how you can use these custom Zappy Sys components uh, that you can get from the SSIS Power Pack. If you want to give it a try but you haven't already downloaded the Power Pack, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget the link is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Zappy Sys YouTube channel to get more updates and SSIS tips and tricks in the future.